Are we hungry like the wolf? No, we're hungry for Andrew Wolfman. Well, get ready to eat him up because here he is the host of Spirit of the Wolf, Andrew Wolfman. Howdy, folks. Welcome to the program. Today is a very special show. I'm welcoming my first ever guest to interview. He is the director of the new film Rogue Hostage, starring John Malkovich and Tyrese Gibson. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Keyes will be here. Now this is a classy gentleman, so we need a classy beverage. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna make my other late grandmother's favorite beverage. To the kettle. Irish tea. For this, it's very simple. We'll be using Lyons, which is a staple of Celtic tradition. I've been to Ireland a few times in my life, and some of the traditions involve going down to the town for a walk, checking out the wildlife, seeing all the sights. Ireland really is a beautiful country. But one big thing is that tea is a staple of their day. If you go to my Aunt Gracie's house and you refuse a cup of tea, you're not leaving. We fill our kettle up with some water, then we put it on the stove. Let it boil, not too high, not too low, just the right amount of heat. Guys, it's really easy to boil a kettle of water. If you this up, I don't know what to tell you. And now we wait. They made a raft out of raincoats that held up to the San Francisco Bay. I feel my t-shirt getting wet through my raincoat every time there's a little drizzle. Maybe I need to stop buying raincoats at Walmart. That's gonna start whistling soon, so we wanna be ready. We take our tea bag. Now, traditionally tea comes with a little string that you hang on the outside of the bag, not lion's tea. It comes in a pyramid bag for some reason. I have no clue. Put that in the cup. I can't emphasize how easy this is, but again, it can go wrong pretty quickly. And now we continue to wait for our water to boil. You know, if they based the movie off of this run, I think it would have been better. Frankly, you know, I like Blake Lively, but I don't think a rom-com was the right way to go. It should be more in space, like a, like a cop show in space. That's how Green Lantern is supposed to work. I, I don't even think Ryan Reynolds was a bad idea. I just... Jeff John should have had more involvement. All right. Now that whistling noise means either our tea is ready or a ghoul is dying. So now we have some nice hot water, as you can see by the billowing smoke. Steam, whatever. I wasn't great in the source class. We add this to our cup. And now we let our bag steep for a few minutes. Guys, it takes a lot of patience to make a cup of tea. So again, have a good book ready or a cell phone if you're a millennial. You know, I could do that too if bacon cheeseburgers didn't taste that good. All right, now our tea is nice and strong. I add one packet of sugar to my cup of tea. I used to add three packets, but then I turned 15. And I decided that tea actually has its own flavor. And finally, we add a little bit of whole milk. In Ireland, milk comes in boxes and bags. Just a fun fact. Doesn't happen here. It happens in Canada. We don't want to add too much, otherwise this just becomes a leafy glass of milk. Give it a nice little stir. And there we have the perfect cup of tea. Classy and perfect for conversation. As we say, slancha. Hello, this is RJ City. I don't know why, but you're watching Spirit of the Wolf. Okay, so now we have our tea. I'm not gonna waste any time cracking any one-liners. Uh, my first guest, and I mean ever, he's the director of such films as American Nightmare and The Harrowing. He is the co-founder of Highland Mist Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the director of the new film, Rogue Hostage, John Keyes. 
Cheers. Hello, everyone. Hi, John. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm not bad, you know. Good to be talking to somebody with the same level of intelligence as me for once. <laughs> I'm glad I get to be here with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, how, you're, I know you're a busy man. What are you up to these days? So we are, of course, Rogue, Rogue Hostage came out a couple of weeks ago, which has been exciting. Um, been working with Yell Entertainment. We've done, we just got finished doing a movie called Bandit with Mel Gibson, Josh Duhamel, Alicia Cuthbert. Um, I was down in Georgia doing a couple of movies uh, with Bruce Willis. Um, and then we're editing. I'm actually right now, today, we're doing the final sound mix on a movie I directed called Survivalist with uh, John Malkovich, Jonathan Reese Myers. So we're finishing that up today, um, doing the final sound mix and then working on getting a uh, couple more movies going over the summer. I don't see you as a man that gets a lot of sleep. Is that is that true? I don't get much sleep at all. I actually, my wife and I were joking. I've been gone all, since January 15th, I've been completely gone with the exception of about three weeks in that entire time period. So I'm gone constantly. <laughs> I'm guessing like if somebody asks you your residence, you say this suitcase? Yes, yeah, exactly. I think in the last, whatever it is, five months, I've been in seven different hotels uh, in three different states over the last five months. So, you know, I always say my home is where my wife is, but my residence is wherever the suitcase stands. Good, to, good. To, I'm sure she'll be glad to hear that. Yes, <laughs> it's, a, now, it's um, the ongoing joke. Now, you've directed, you've directed a lot of horror movies in the past. What attracted you to Rogue Hostage, which is more action oriented than your previous work? So, I mean, I've always been, I've always been a fan of horror. I grew up, my family um, out in LA growing up were always into horror. My aunt was building Halloween houses back all the way into like 1975 before it was even a thing. She was building Halloween houses. So I kind of grew up with horror and that was always a thing. But as I became a filmmaker, I always kind of joked, or I, not even joked, I always said, story is what's, what I really want to do. I want to be a storyteller and I want to tell stories. But because I loved horror, that was something that really attracted me and I kind of kept doing it. But the further, you know, I've been doing this for 21 years now. Um, and you know, I've done comedy, I've done drama also. I just kind of got known as horror, but I wanted to break out. I've always been a fan of like Tony Scott. Tony Scott, Peter Berg, love their movies, love those action movies, and always sort of wanted to step into action movies. But once again, action movies that had character development, that told a story, that had an arc, so that you had all of the fun of the action, but you also had an actual story to tell as well. And so Rogue Hostage, working with Yale Entertainment, we've been looking for a movie for me to start directing with them. I've always wanted to do action and I've played with it a little bit, but never done a straight up action movie. So the opportunity, because of COVID, came along to be able to direct Rogue Hostage. And I jumped in with both feet, you know, to, to have that opportunity. And then, you know, Rogue Hostage became The Survivalist, which is also an action movie, with the next one being Banshee, which is also an action movie. I've really kind of, I'm really, I'm really digging the action stuff and, and and loving the opportunity to kind of play in that world. Really nice to see you sink your teeth into this. I, now, I'm not going to hide anything. You know, this isn't, you know, a conflict of interest. I had a small part in working on Rogue Hostage, so I'm not I'm not going to hide that from people. But seeing you, like, behind he, the scenes... Like, he's been involved know, in a lot of movies. He's been involved in a lot of movies we've done. <laughs> okay. I, I just want to say that I, he did not pay to be here today. I asked him to be here. So, <laughs> trust, trust me, this isn't any sort of bribe. I, John Keyes is doing me a favor. Um, it's just really... A, you're one of the kindest men I've ever seen, like, in this film, in, in the film industry. Just how you go about it, how you work with your actors, which I was really lucky to see for the first time, having worked with you merely as a producer. That being, um, that being said, what made you think of John Malkovich and Tyrese Gibson for these roles? So Tyrese, Tyrese was actually already involved in Rogue Hostage when I got involved. Um, Yell, Yell Entertainment had Rogue Hostage for, for a little while. They had partnered up with Tyrese. And I was involved in it, but I was only involved in it as a producer at that point. Um, and we, we thought Tyrese, you know, of course, because of all the Fast and the Furious movies, we thought Tyrese, it would be great to see him starring in his own action movie. And of course, he's done that. He's started plenty of his own movies, but we just thought he would be a really unique, interesting actor for that particular role in Rogue Hostage. 
Um, one of the things that I love about Rogue Hostage is the diversity of both the cast and the storyline. That was something Mickey, when he wrote the script, we really wanted it to be about diversity and about people from all walks of life, all cultures, um, you know, and so, so Tyrese was a perfect fit for that. But we had written the script or Mickey had written the script with the idea that here you've got this African-American lead, but he's also got a Caucasian stepfather. And there was a dynamic, there was a dynamic inherent to the story as a result of that, the sort of the conflict of, of them trying to figure out how to navigate that relationship. Um, of course, John's character is a, is a congressman, and we were trying to find the right the right actor, you know, for that role. Um, I can't remember. Somebody brought up John. Somebody brought up John, and all of us were like, "Oh my God, John would be fantastic!" And the and we thought that the relationship, because of the way each of them approaches acting and, and present themselves on film, we thought it would become a really interesting dynamic between the two of them. And of course, I mean, it was fantastic. John Malkovich is just a truly distinguished gentleman, um, you know, and he's a for a director, you know, he's one of those guys that you just kind of get out of the way. Um, you know, and he brought, you know, his entire bag of tricks with him also. And so I thought working with both of them was wonderful. And then watching the two of them and the energy between the two of them, the conflict between the two of them on screen was just dynamic. And I thought it, it, we were all, we were all incredibly happy with how that, that relationship turned out. I'm, I'm sure everyone will see that when they go rent Road Hostage, now available on streaming. Um, one of my bigger questions here, the global elephant in the room, this was actually one of the very first movies to start filming after the onset of the global like COVID-19 pandemic. What were some of the challenges involved with doing that? Like the new regulations, what were the obstacles you had to overcome being like I, in a fairly new world as opposed yeah. to one that you've spent years in? It was, so it was interesting because we had been doing, we did, a, we were doing a movie in Alabama um, in March as COVID was kind of really ramping up. And unfortunately that particular movie um, got shut down the first day of production because of COVID-19, just not, not because anybody got sick, but because of all of the stay at home orders. So we had already just kind of experienced, we were one of the very last films in production um, when all of the stay at home orders start, uh, started and we had to shut down. That movie's been completed since then. Um, but it was, you know, that had a very incredible very interesting impact on us trying to figure out how do we navigate this and how do we prevent this COVID-19 from literally shutting us down as it's shutting the entire world down. Um, so we got involved with the unions and with the different people that were creating what eventually became the white papers and the return to work agreement and such. And so we were, we were sort of involved in that. We were, we were kind of monitoring that entire way. And I think, when we got up and running with Rogue Hostage, I want to say we were the sixth movie into production. I mean, we were we were right there at the beginning. I think you know maybe even the third movie into production in COVID, um, and we had to spend a lot of time, particularly with SAG um, and with you know with CDC and stuff, trying to figure out what exactly are we kind of what are we supposed to do and how do we do this. They had just published the white papers, which kind of became the guidelines. Eventually, there was a thing that came out, a new set of guidelines called the Return to Work Agreement, but that happened afterwards. So we were, in a way, a bit of a guinea pig in figuring out what works and what doesn't and, and how to kind of navigate that. Um, you know, we, we took it all very seriously. Obviously, we wanted everybody to be safe. You know, we didn't want anybody to get sick. Um, and so we were kind of working with and understanding. I mean, I even feel like, uh, you know, at least once or twice during during production, we had to actually shift our uh, procedures on what we were doing as new information was coming out on how we were supposed to do things. But I do remember, I think it was, you know, the first two or three days was very, I don't want to say difficult, but just strange, you know. I'd say antsy is kind of like the term. It's like, okay, is it yeah. safe to be out there again? Like, you know, once the weather clears, you're like, okay, yeah. is it about to start raining again? Yeah, it was like, oh, we have to do a safety meeting. Oh, we have to, there's a checkpoint that we have to stop at and get our temperatures taken and, you know, the nasal swabs and getting your brain tickled with the, you know, with for the testing, the continuous testing. But it was interesting was, I think 
as weird as it was, you know, we got to step into it a little bit just because of pre-production. When people are still more spread out, working individually, slowly coming together, you kind of got a sense of what it might be like. So you got to to step into it. I think the weirdest thing for me was day one of filming at lunch because obviously we had to have usually your lunch you've got like eight people packed to a table and the room is packed and and instead it's six foot tables one person allowed to be at each end of the table and everybody spread out and i remember standing there and it was so quiet and everybody's just by themselves and i'm like it feels like I'm in middle school again, but every single person is the odd man out that can't talk to anybody. <laughs> you know, as the person that set up those tables, it, I'm always counting in my head, okay, this is how many I need. There's gonna be eight people. Okay, this is how many you need. I'm gonna need a bigger truck. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. That of all the things that happened on that first movie because of COVID, that was the strangest thing. That was the one thing I could never get used to was having lunch and really having to shout, you know, talk to somebody six feet away while you're having like covering lunch. yourself with the mask just in case you needed to talk. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That was the weird part. But I mean, obviously, you know, we've now done or been involved in seven movies, maybe eight movies during the pandemic. Um, with Rogue Hostage being the first one. Um, and, you know, we've, we got lucky in that, you know, we follow the procedures, we take them seriously. Nobody's gotten sick on any of our movies. Um, but it's, it's been a very fascinating, and of course, with this very last one we just finished, um, as the, I don't want to say the pandemic, you know, it's not over with, but as the, as things have been lifting and people are getting vaccinated and all of that, you can feel that sort of internal struggle that everybody just wants to go back to normal, but they know they still have to follow the procedures. And so we're back in that awkward phase again. You're seeing the people walking around with like, you know, I can keep this down for a second. You know, it's fine. I've, I've got my shots. Right, exactly. So you, people are people are still trying to remind everybody you got to do this right. You still got to stick to the regulations. But of course, the bubble's gone, and things are starting to lax a little bit. And I think everybody's. I, I mean, of course, everybody's ready to kind of get back to the way it was. Let me ask you this, and I know we're veering a little bit away from Rogue Hostage. What's the one thing that you couldn't do during quarantine that you're looking forward to getting back to the most? Um. Honestly, which is, has started happening now, it was being able to go out and eat at restaurants. You know, that was the big thing. Um, my wife and I were both foodies. We love to go out and, and, and eat and try out new places, mom and pop restaurants and stuff. And the fact that we couldn't do that during all of this, that was the most frustrating thing. <laughs> so I'm grateful like we got to go out this morning this is the first time I mean I just kind of I just got back Boulder Colorado has been Colorado has been open for a little while now so the fact that we got to go out for breakfast this morning to one of our long-standing restaurants was I mean they, we walked in and the people who have known us for 14 years were like hey you're here it's so exciting to see you <laughs> Is it okay to hug? Is it okay to hug? You don't know. <laughs> right, exactly. We didn't hug. <laughs> I think I think the best part of this whole pandemic exactly. is that we kind of all popularized and just accepted the elbow bump as the new yep. thing. Exactly. And I'm not sure I'm ready to go back to like the fist yet. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, as we wrap it up, I just have one more question for you. Where were you June 12th, 1994? I was actually in Texas. I owned a bookstore at the time. My, we actually have kind of got, we back then we actually went through where where was everybody at that night and we were actually in bed in texas so unless i managed to sneak out and get on a plane fly out and fly back before my wife woke up i was in bed you know i believe you but you've also managed to make about seven or eight movies over the course of a year so i don't put anything past your abilities i hey, think that you could you might have been responsible for the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, but for now, we'll let you off the hook. John Keyes, I want to thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, Rogue Hostage, available now on streaming. Please be sure to check it out. Um, thank you. Thank you. I love, have, I love being here, and, and uh, you know, I wish you all the success as well. I'm going to take that. Cheers. Cheers. Huge, huge thank you to John Keyes and all our friends at Yale Productions. Please check out Rogue Hostage, now streaming on a service near you. Now, I suppose you're reaching this part of the show and wondering, did his shirt change a few times throughout that? Well, first of all, what are you doing watching my show and not working for cinema scenes? Second of all, reasonable explanation. I film out of order, as a lot of people do, moving room to room, stuff like that. And 
me and my roommate decided to get into a super soaker battle about whether or not I told her something or not. I think I did. I don't know. I, I had to change my shirt. That's how mature adults settle their disagreements. Anyway, thank you again for joining me. I will be back for the 4th of July holiday. I'm going to show you some great ways to beat the heat, including margaritas. So until then, stay classy and remember, happy birthday, Nick Charlock.